Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I want to take you through step by step on how to produce your own thermal electric generator at home. Uh, this will be a very long and complicated project in the end, but you'll be able to produce enough to charge a 12 volt battery setup when we're done. Uh, what you see here, and it's very difficult to see, these are two pretty thin sections of wire. Is this a single V of wire here? Uh, I have my meter connected on the two opposite ends. You can see here, uh, that's a positive and negative of my meter. And I have the other two sides joined together here, just as a wrapped ball or a knot. Now, the one metal that you see, the shiny metal here, is a very unique property metal. Something you probably haven't heard about or used, and it's called nitinol. Uh, this is uh, super elastic nitinol, not memory nitinol, which has a completely different property base and how it works and how it functions. I found that super elastic nitinol actually does pretty well. For a thermoelectric generator, it actually follows the Seebeck principles pretty well, that, which is the electrical generation created between two dissimilar conductors when they're heated and they're cooled. Uh, so what I've got here is just like I said, a simple V. It looks just like a V made out of two dissimilar conductors. One here at the bottom is copper magnet wire. I have it stripped with some sandpaper at the ends. On both sides so the meter can attach and so the night and all can make a solid uh, connection electrically to the copper wire. I also sanded the night and all on both sides. It doesn't really need it, but I did that just to guarantee a good connection. Uh, so I have the meter hooked up to either side of this. I have the meter over here set to DC voltage. And I'm going to take a lighter. If I can get this right. I'm going to take a lighter. I'm going to heat up this junction point. I want you to watch that meter and see just how much electricity you can produce with a single V between copper and nitinol wire. So here we go. You should see immediate voltage on the meter. And there we go. We should be raising pretty quick. If I can get this to the right temperature, it should peak out right around 5.2. There we go. So you actually see a 5.6. That's because the air temperature inside the building right now is very cold. So I'm actually using the air temperature around me, which is early in the morning, and it's, I didn't heat up the house this morning. I decided to leave the wood stove off and allow for the temperature to rise, or to get really cold in here, so I could use that dissimilar temperature between the lighter's point of heating right there and the outside to generate the highest voltage I could get without any fans or heat sinks or anything else connected to this. Uh, so there you go. There's a really good indicator of the thermoelectric property of nitinol wire uh, in combination with copper magnet wire. You can watch the voltage over there dropping back off. I'll let it go down for a second. Hit it again with the lighter. And it should come right back up. You'll notice that for such a thin amount of wire, I'm producing a pretty good amount of voltage. I mean, 5.6 or more there uh, millivolts is actually pretty good for such a small heat source. I think that says 5.9 right now. So, you know, that's, that's really good for just a lighter over two tiny thin pieces of metal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through step by step how to take these two property metals and set them up in a uh, injunction so that we can produce a very large thermoelectric generator that will actually sit in our wood stove pipe to our uh, gasifier wood stove and this will all be homemade so we'll be able to produce everything all on homemade materials throughout that wood stove even our own electricity through, uh, through the thermoelectric effect well until next time I hope you enjoyed this was Mr. Tesalonian and the Tesalonian Man Show